Thank you for calling AOL. Please hold. Thank you for calling AOL. No, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in today. No, I, I, I usually work out of New York. I'm, I'm just, I'm here in Virginia for the day. Just, just filling in. Please hold. Hey Rod, what do you do if you have all these things to do and you don't know if you should do things that generate revenue or you should do housekeeping things? How do you decide how to prioritize their priorities? Now look, I know exactly what you mean. The phones here at AOL, they don't stop ringing. But being serious for a minute, as you know, we relaunched AOL Small Business this year. And as I told many of you during the launch, I finally felt like an entrepreneur. I was starting something from scratch and then watching it come to life and then wondering how the heck do we actually run this thing. So I know exactly what you mean. And I think you have to look at these day-to-day -day tasks, these housekeeping tasks as you put them and really make a list of them and see which of them you're still handling yourself. And if any are impeding the core mission of your company and preventing you from doing what you do best, which is grow your company, growing revenue. So I, I would take a look at this list and stuff that you can knock off. We're talking about a lot of HR functions, payroll, things like that. There are a ton of good services out there now because there are millions of small businesses in this country that are dealing with situations just like this. And kind of a final point, as you know, I'm a huge fan of interns. I think they can be a great asset for an entrepreneurial company. And they can also help you with some of these housekeeping things. And the advantage to them is they're getting Getting some good experience uh, at a startup or a fast-growing company, so something to consider. Hey Rod, what type of top three strategies would you give um, a new venture when it comes to drafting and writing a quality business plan? You know, the business plan debate is an interesting one because there are a lot of entrepreneurs that think you don't need one at all. I wouldn't say most think that, but some definitely do because you're moving so quickly that by the time you get from point A to point B, the plan's changed altogether. But I would recommend doing some kind of plan. And I think the three things you have to consider is one, to keep it clear. I judge a lot of business plan competitions and I come at it, I'm not an investor, I come at it as a journalist, as sort of a lay person, as someone who knows a lot about entrepreneurial companies. And half the time I'm 10 pages in and I cannot figure out what the company does. Sometimes it's very technical, but sometimes it's because entrepreneurs, they're so close to what they do, they assume that everyone knows everything about what they do. So you wanna keep it clear and concise, really explain, give real world examples of where your product or service fits into the marketplace. I think the second thing is you want to keep it balanced and sort of well-rounded that you want to make sure you've got financial information in there obviously but you want to get into what your product or service does where it has an advantage over the competition make sure you're hitting all the different points because chances are and this sort of gets to my third point you're gonna have different types of audiences looking at this so you want to make sure that you're writing the plan as much for yourself as you are for investors for bankers whoever it may be mentors that you go to remember this is supposed to be a plan that helps you get from point A to point B, huh? and if it's not written with your company in mind and the growth that you hope to achieve, it's not really serving its job.